at the management briefing seminars. Advanced powertrain, advanced vehicles, a key part of it. Mm -hmm. We're talking with Pam Fletcher right now, the chief engineer for all electrified vehicles at General Motors. And even though we have the Bolt EV behind us, I know you guys aren't talking that much about it. Let's get into the details of the Volt. You've got quite a bit more range than you had before, but let's just pretend for the moment I own a current Volt. Why should I come back and buy the new one? You probably love your current Volt, but you're going to love the second generation car truly better on every measure. And so, you know, our philosophy with the second generation car, our recipe for it was derived exactly from our owners. They told us precisely what they loved about the car, and they told us the things they would like to see us maybe try something a little bit different. So our recipe was give them more what they love, and the things that they said we could look at a little differently, we did just that. Now, one thing I know was range, right? Mm -hmm. That's one thing that you really keyed in on. Range is about number one through 100 on their list of what they wanted more of. So we've given them about 40% more range. So the EPA label on the second generation Volt is 53 miles of all electric driving. What were some of the things that they told you, hey, why don't you improve in this area? Yeah, so if you look at the interior of the car, I think you'll find the interior of the car is very intuitive. It looks, um, frankly, fairly premium. It has a center stack display um, that's uh, clear, colorful, but simple. It has those knobs people are looking for, for the volume on the radio, you know, the temperature of the AC or the heat, the fan speed, those things that you change most often, that you want simple controls to access them. Pam, one thing that I find so interesting is GM's got a pretty big portfolio of electrified mm -hmm. vehicles right now. Plug-in electrics with the volts and uh, the CT6 Cadillac coming. You've right. got the, the ELR version mm -hmm. of uh, the Volt with Cadillac. You've got the Spark EV. Are you able to scale these things? Is, is there a way that you can use these different technologies in these different vehicles and get the cost down? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, that was the point of my uh, discussion here at the management briefing seminars was just the, um, uh, the way that we do component sharing, the way we do, do reuse. We have a, a sharing and um, reuse strategy between generations of products and things like uh, controls and software, which take a lot of engineering hours. And then within generations, we share many, many things, um, some inside the propulsion system and some outside. For instance, regenerative braking, um, our HVAC, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems and thermal management, um, the human machine interfaces between for all the electrification specific uh, screens and displays. So, and then within the propulsion system, a terrific story. You know, we have a very modular battery packs. So literally, when you look at our, our energy packs, for example, used on the Cadillac CT6, used on the second generation Volt, um, used on the Spark EV, every component and piece is the same. But we're able to rearrange them. They're built into uh, simple modules and we can rearrange the modules to integrate or package into the cars exactly what's needed. So you can have a T-Pack in the Volt, you can have a nice cube that fits seamlessly into the Cadillac CT6, and the Spark EV has its own solution, all with the same component set. And that takes cost down, obviously. Absolutely. The other thing that's so interesting is you're taking used battery packs mm -hmm. from the Volt and using that in power applications for buildings. What's the potential? I know you're doing it within GM, mm -hmm. but could you go outside too? Is there a market case? Because what I'm getting at is, boy, if these batteries can be used by others, it would seem to be another way to take the cost down. Yeah, so we've been experimenting with that for many, many years now. In reality, we have some installations at um, Oak Ridge National Labs, working with you know, our, uh, our national labs here in the, in the U.S. Um, we have installations on GM facilities, like we now supply the backup battery power for the Milford IT Center with an array of um, used volt packs. So we continue to work um, uh, internally. We work with outside suppliers, people in the electric industry, the electric um, utility equipment industry to really um, continue to hone and refine that. So um, very possible, exists today, and I think we'll just continue to see what the opportunities are um, to really make use of those packs in the public space. Well, I hope it really pays off and that, yeah. that actually works because that could be a whole new way of taking battery costs down. Absolutely. And you know, batteries have a long life. And even when a battery maybe is no longer suitable for a car, it still has a lot of use. So it really, really makes sense to find that secondary operation. Pam Fletcher, thanks so much for the update. Thanks, John. Great to talk to you.
Auto Line on the Road is brought to you by the American Chemistry Council Plastics Division Automotive Roadmap. Available now for free download 